Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow. Talisman is a classic game of fantasy and adventure, and in this video we're going to take a look at its history, its additions and their expansions in this Talisman retrospective. First released back in 1983 as Talisman, the game started out as something totally different to what it became. It was created by Robert Harris as a game for him and his friends to play, and originally the objective of the game was to become a prefect at a boys school. It was only when the setting was changed to one of fantasy and the name to Talisman that Robert was able to sign a publishing contract with Games Workshop and the game was revealed at the 1983 Games Day. So what's in the box? For this um, there's many editions of Talisman so I thought we'd have a quick look through the second because the first is and the second are much the same. Uh, the third and the fourth uh, uh, edition. So here is my old battered Talisman 2nd edition box and inside it does contain one of the expansions, the, uh, I think it's the adventure one with the uh, character sheets in and we'll cover the expansions later on as normal. But this is a well loved and well worn box, um, it fell apart when I was younger and I did a massive no no and repaired it with um, sellotape and if you watch my battle masters sort of video I did uh, where I repair it with glue, that's how you meant to do it. This is what the box looks like. Uh, I find boxes back then, Games Workshop boxes, really stuck out really nice. Um, it's the back of it, there's just something about them, just that shiny gold. Tells you what you're going to get inside. Um, yeah, that's got a list of stuff you're going to get inside. So I thought we we're going to look into it, it's probably more in here than uh, what you'd normally get in this because I said I've got an expansion in here, but hey ho it does have one important thing missing which i'm still trying to track down which i've somehow managed to lose uh yeah box art is lovely this sort of keep in the background here with these stairs going up and this warrior very reminiscent of the dnd red box around the same sort of era fighting a dragon uh yeah brilliant love that go can we go back to this art please in games this is amazing art. uh the box is just plain inside um here we have uh, some, well, some loyalty, loyalty rewards for something. Uh, here we have some little chits, just numbers, one, one being four and two, for various different uses within the game. There's probably more of these normally, I've said lost them over the years. Uh, alignment cards, alignment you're now good, evil, you can see that sort of style here. Uh, gold tokens, definitely lost loads of these over the years. Um, I have to admit this was just kept in my parents attic then in my attic and in the condition of the box all these little pits have a lot been lost. Um, character cards and their sheets uh, what I might do is come in closer to have a look at these in a minute and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what's here on this angle. We have the toad cards so uh, fourth edition players maybe uh, used to having a toad model but you had a card that just told you you were a toad and the rules were covered on it here so you know strength one craft one you only move one space yada yada we have the spell deck which again we'll look at this later on because it has lovely art the adventure deck uh, with slightly different colored cards which will cover from the expansions to the normal game so you kind of knew what adventure cards are coming up weird uh, purchase deck the uh, titular talisman cards that you need uh, and the endings now these are from the expansion so I won't cover these too much but then we have the board uh, the board again if you've seen the um, dungeon quest video you'll see the board is quite similar to that in fact it's a jigsaw but you're probably gonna spot quite soon I've only got three pieces. Why have I only got three pieces? How can I, a piece of the board be missing? So if you ever see uh, a second edition board going on eBay, give me a shout so I can have a purchase on it so I can just buy a replacement for this because I kind of do want it. And then we have the rules. Uh, the rules, so it's in this sort of book here, quite plain, no colour but gets the job done. Back then rules were text block affairs so there's not a lot to look at here. 
and then I have two of these things which are questions and answers and I'm imagining one came in the uh, expansion and one came in the normal set I can't remember unless they both come in the expansion but it's just a q and A. I'm I imagining I would think this came in the expansion just because it talks about it here so I imagine these are just little fact just to cut clear some things up that they've been sent in because we had no internet back then to ask online now let's have a quick look at the cards close up can't remember what's what now some of these characters are from the expansion uh, that i'll cover later on and some are in the base game so i'm just going to quickly blast through them dwarf i think that's base orc i think it's expansion Let's see the character here you can see the little small sheet that you had your gold your spells, your followers, your objects you put around, and your rules. Fourth, Centaur is expansion. I want to say Woodsman is base. Soldier is expansion. Uh, Warrior Chaos. Expan Ninja's definitely expansion. Samurai is expansion. Warrior is base. Elfie, everyone's favourite, is base. I forget Monk. I'm going to forget a lot of these, which are uh, great video, eh? <laughs> Informative video of me forgetting things. So there's the priest, prophetess. Some of these will be uh, really familiar to players of the uh, fourth edition. Cool, but this look at this. Just the artwork is superb. Troll, minstrel, and uh, I've lost his standee, but that's the druid. A lot of you uh, maybe even recognise these from the models in the fourth because they were based on this design. I just wish the artwork would revert back to this and the sorceress and the witch, witch doctor definitely expansion. I really wish they would, I don't know, it's just me, I just wish companies would cater for old school gamers a bit more. You have the RSR in the uh, role playing world, I wish we'd had something like this for the board gaming world, something like this, that's a spell. As for adventure, you can see here that some are different colours because some are expansion, some are base game. But we're not going to go through them all because size of that and we'll be here all day and we're only on the first unboxing so but yeah, i just want to give you a taste of the art you know it's it's fantastic i'm just going to quickly skim through maybe not all of them it's the same process as if you've played this in full for you know and love monsters events raiders they look ghost i, I love that as a ghost it's more like a physical zombie type thing, but ghost gold, horsey horse. There's something just the world in the back. I know it's simplistic, but that just really makes me want to explore this world. So yeah, you get talisman, skim through siren, bandit, bandito, phantom menace. Yeah, that for a bear. Wolves, uh, yeah, so the artwork's great. I can't really dwell too much on it. I was like, one will break these down and have a look. Tomb, look at that for just. Oh, God, it's just so good, the art on these. Uh, zombies, band of zombies. It's just brilliant. Some of these I'd love as postcards to put on the wall. You know, as decoration for the Battling Barrow room. Let's see if I can find some online and print them off. Some sort of big blown up versions of these. Oh, the artists back then were just brilliant. We could go through the spells. The same sort of artwork. Just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. And again, some of these are from base, some are from expansion. Different colour bags. Don't know why. How did that go wrong? Last set cards to quickly go through the hex deck. Uh, hex deck? That was from the spells thing. Purchase deck. <laughs> oh, the art's just done me in. Oh, drafts. Why are you all upside down? Okay. Mule. Uh, mule with no name. Let's move on to the third edition. The uh, third edition of the game came in for the time, uh, very similar, it's become known as the Red Box era of GW, all the boxes had this 
red sort of spine. Uh, the artwork was very invocative of sort of where GW was at the time in the mid 90s, a very Warhammer fantasy type feel. Uh, the back of the box contained what the goodness was contained within. Uh, and what was it within? So inside. I'm going to look at this all in a bit more close later on, but we had lots of cards for the game as we used to. Yeah, bog standard dice. Uh, the chits have been replaced by a plastic cone, so health, stamina, magic, and fate experience. All done by these, and much the same in the fourth edition. Uh, we had the character sheets, cards have been replaced by these thick cardboard uh, sheets. In the game, which we'll be looking at closely later, are the plastic models, character models. Uh, pretty standard for a uh, Games Workshop game at the time was the World of Hobby Games. So this is just effectively a mini white dwarf. There's the 5th uh, edition, 2005th edition, this one is there. The lovely boxes I collect here, the army books for the time. I had to play the game of Warhammer, so you know, 40k. I don't see the appeal of 40k, I never have. Um, but then I'm not into sci fi, so I wouldn't. I just don't get it, I don't get why it's so popular. Uh, yeah, lovely models of. Uh, GW at the time, he's still going, you can still buy him in resin, fine cast. Bought him the other year. Yeah, great models, got that. And once we have that, we shouldn't dwell in too much on all these. Uh, the how to paint your models, so getting you into how to paint your models. So if you're new to the world of miniature painting, you can follow this. Paint your models quickly. I did sort of use these as reference pictures when I was painting mine. And the rules, excellent art on the rules. Lots of skulls, as was the case for most GW games of the era. Uh, a bit more colourful than the second edition rules. Uh, a bit more easier to read just to these, just because it wasn't just blocks of text. It was broken up with sections. So you could quickly see where they were due to the colour. And the board. Uh, the board was no longer a jigsaw board, but it was a two piece fold out board that is freaking my camera out for some reason. Yeah, look at that. As soon as I open it, that freaks my camera out. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's cursed. Camera's fine. Camera's freaking out. Well, let's, let's adjust that and have a look in. But if you can handle it, just freaking out for some reason. I do freak out when you go close. No. Just too much stuff for the camera to handle. Look, yeah, let's go in. You can see the board is very scully. There is a lot of skulls on this board. For those of you who like skulls, we've got you covered on this board. Skull City, but that's what the board looks like with no center, center region. First up, uh, some adventure cards. Um, there is loads of these, so that's uh, I guess more standard adventure cards than you get in the uh, previous editions. And these are no expansions, just standard. Look at those. So, uh, artwork wise, uh, gold coins. Amazon. Artwork's not too dissimilar, so it's not egregious or anything. I'm not going to look at this, and it's not going to make you uh, vomit or anything. I quite like this. It's probably a bit more saturated in colours. Colours are a bit more bright rather than pastely in the other editions. Things like the Poltergeist do have that very mid '90s Games Workshop feel, which I do like. So I do like the artwork in these. Uh, it still gives me those sort of warm fuzzies. Uh, try and show you prime examples of so you can see the difference in the more 
cartoony GW Warhammer style at the time. As I said, like this style, I appreciate it, so I've got nothing against this. Uh, don't want to be here. Serpent. Really do like this. Uh, Banshee. Yay. <laughs> I do like that. Look at that. Yeah, it's great. Raff. Or Rafe. Inhuman. Succubus. I remember. So we had the Bants last one. Good comparison to the different style. But again, I really like this. It. Just that strong night sky in the background. The strong moon and the bat and the trees. Really do like this artwork. Giant, you don't need to see the full thing. <laughs> you just need to see that he is big. Foot house. Yes. Familiar. Shrine again. That's invocative. Um, yeah, shrine within the woods. Ogres. When GW had good ogres, not when they went later in the was it sixth edition. They changed the ogres, made it the ogre kingdoms. I hated that design of ogre. That's an ogre GW. That is certainly a bandit. Oh, that art again. Let's go back to this style of art. You know this. Late 80s, early 90s art. I'm going to sort of blast through these because we have still got tons to go. The standard GW Orc. Gorilla? What are you doing? Get back in the mist. Gargoyle. Really cool. Right, so <laughs> we'll be here all day. <laughs> One of my longest uh, retrospectives, I think, just for the amount of content there is in Talisman. Purchase deck. So this is all your weapons. Armour bows, mules with no names. Blood sword. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, we have the actual talismans. There were triangles in the first and second, now they're this weird, weird, weird thing. Don't know why. Toad cards, and these uh, are contain the rules for the toad. So you each have one of these, like something similar before. But you also got toad token to replace your playing piece with a toad, which we'll get onto the playing pieces shortly. Uh, spells had this design on the back, and you know, again, just good spell artwork. It spells. Uh, the middle of the board was replaced by a, uh, <clears throat> a card series. It only had two regions, and the middle was replaced by this. And these contained basically the different areas that were in the previous middle one. With the teacher to crown the command at the end. That's the tower cards. Also, have a quick look at you had instead of plastic uh, cardboard tokens for money, you actually got some plastic ones with values on. And look, Games Workshop minted coin, so that was really cool. And you also had alignment chits, so good alignment, neutral alignment, and somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> Where's the evil? This must be evil, just a pile of evil, yeah. So it's evil. So yeah, those. Now of course. Let's get on to the models. The cards, uh card character sheets look like this now. So they were fit card, slightly bigger, give you more area. And they also came and it was GW models. I mean, obviously mine aren't going to be as well painted as the ones you see there, but I definitely was pleased with these anyway. Uh, barbarian. I'm going to have a Barbarian. Everyone's favourite elf makes return, this time specifying he is a wood elf. Uh, you can see I didn't give him the blue and white stripy pants. Because I want him to look more like he lived in the woods and didn't stand out at camouflage, you know? He's not silly. The Knight Templar. 
and the models are for mid 90s plastic really nice and detailed so the rivets on his pauldrons there uh, the ranger again didn't go with the bright red cloak he had I wanted him to look like he could blend in with the rangerness of the wilds <laughs> Uh, I'm not really happy with the green on his cloak. I'm going to go back and tidy that up. It was just... I did that in a contrast paint. Uh, and I feel that contrast paints and old models don't really work too well because they're too flat. So I need to go back and touch that up. We've got sp uh, stripy trousers on. Uh, okay, so we've had the barbarian. And this looks like a barbarian, but this is a warrior. It's effectively a barbarian, isn't it? Whatever it is. <laughs> Tiger loincloth. And super nipples. Yeah, that's that. There we go. And we're entering into the realm of the Warhammer world with a goblin fanatic. Yeah. I have my goblins painted quite dark in their skin colour. I sort of have... The smaller they are, the darker their skin, and the bigger they are, the lighter their skin. So my goblins are always this dark green. And my orcs look more like that in Warhammer. It's just something I've done. Don't know why, I think I just have more skin pigment when they're smaller. When they're bigger, they're stretched, so it looks lighter. I think that's probably my thinking behind it. It's a thinking. Uh, the Minotaur. I guess this replaces the Troll in the second edition, first and second edition. Uh, Warhammer Quest players may recognise this chap as this is one of the trolls in uh, their game or their game out that game I play it too so it's my game too so I got distracted by the green on his skin there don't know how that got there I've just touched that up it's been there for a while yeah here we got yep we are definitely in the realm of the Warhammer world with a Skaven uh, it's very similar to the model in uh, Advanced Hero Quest, just without the shield. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a Skaven. Oh, it starts in the ruins. Uh, the Dwarf, uh, I love this paint scheme because he looks like he is a an American football player for some reasons, or Blood Bowl Dwarf, <laughs> I don't know, just, just that blue and red scheme especially on the helmet and his uniform just reminds me of a American football player slightly so I followed that through on my model I wanted that feel <laughs> I don't know why uh, the swashbuckler yeah he's a very I did not attempt the freehand black bird on his chest like it did give him stripy trousers yeah as I say you can see the detail on the faces very nice very nice detail. And finally, yeah, gotta have a wizard. So I went more for a purple wizard. I don't know why. I think it was more um, because of the skull. He looked like he was probably into Shaiish. And I think when I think Shaiish, I think purple. Okay, so that's the contents of the third edition. So uh, let's go on to the fourth. And we are on to the fourth edition, which is a different size box again. I mean, second edition was like a little box like that. Fourth was a big lot of rectangle box. This is a square. This is the Fancy Flight edition of the game. So it's the revised edition. Um, Artwork is typical of Fancy Flight games, really. Um, they're Warhammer sort of world games and Talisman games, and for that matter, most of their games. The, uh, they just have a certain style for Fancy Flight. Is it bad? No, it's rather good, but still prefer the slightly older art. But I still prefer this to art that comes out nowadays, so that's nice. Back of the box shows what is contained, uh, and it is a fair amount. It does have Games Workshop logo there, because even though it's made by Fancy Flight, it's still a Games Workshop <laughs> game. It's probably the heaviest box as well in them. So we'll open up, Let's cover the rule book first, which is this is so Fancy Flight, this rule book, it hurts. It's just that standard Fancy Flight rule book, full color, so it's gorgeously laid out. 
but whereas before it was it's the same rules there's not a lot of extra rules but whereas before we had just like a few pages we now have a ream of it so but don't panic a lot of it is examples so you take go through here so it covers what each bit is it goes really in depth on, on stuff perhaps a bit too in depth but it has examples of play here in these red boxes so if you, you can read the rules if you still don't understand you see it in action here um yeah it's full full color which is lovely nice and glossy which is great for filming because it's just bouncing off the board let's have a look at the board it's massive i don't think i'm going to be able to get it in no matter what i do because it doesn't look that big but it folds out and it folds out and it folds out will the camera freak out of this board no it rather likes this one uh, yeah so it's six times the size of the box so the inner region makes a return uh, the artwork is just great I do love this you just really imagine yourself on a magical journey stink circles here oh, I have to spin it around <laughs> the village I'm now so far away from my mic because of the size of this board oh I imagine Oh, hang on, let me get back in. Imagine when you've got all the expansions that add on to the corner, how big this playing surface is. This is this is a game board. I love this. I think Talisman's the only game that's consistently appeals to me throughout each of its uh, editions. There we go. So there's a game board. That was exhausting. <laughs> On to the contents of the box. Uh, we have cards as per normal. So we have cards there, we have spells, we have things, talisman cards. The triangular talisman makes a return. Wrench cards. Fake tokens. These you can use to um, change outcomes of dice you can spend one of these to re-roll dice really great mechanic i love that in games uh, middle earth spg has you know might points that you can use to do something similar just love that mechanic in the game if you're having a dice roll game it's give the player some sort of strategic option to affect that dice roll uh, the colored cones make a return no purple ones this time because we have those uh, you'll notice that they are different colored in the base game that means nothing, but in the expansions that will be important, so fought ahead. Colour cones. Uh, dice, custom dice, because on the one is the talisman, and I love these dice. I would buy loads of these dice, so see how lucky I'm going to be. Mm, make of that what you will, two ones, two fours, a three and a five. Uh, the coins make a return. Uh, this time they have talisman and the triangle talisman on both sides uh, with a one on them here yeah, so I, I think they're all value of one I don't think there's any fives or anything in there they're all just one uh, we have character sheets and the characters so let's uh, adjust the camera to have a close look first up wizard uh, yeah with the miniatures I've tried to paint them to match their artwork and these are little I'd say these are true 25 millimeter scale models so they're gonna look out of place in 28 mil or perhaps even 25 heroic but they're still nice and detailed there that soft plastic models but not as soft as some games medium plastic if that's a thing we have the wizard Ooh, the thief there you are, he has stolen a talisman. The thief model looks like. The priest. Uh, I've tried to get his glasses in, hopefully you can see that there. They're quite fiddly to paint. The sorceress. wasn't too unhappy with her face, normally I'm really bad at painting faces, especially this quality of model where it's maybe not be the most detailed um, or anything, but 
that's her. With a skull, so the game's not as scully as the third edition. Yeah, kind of enjoyed painting these at the time. So at the time I was painting a lot of Middle Earth SPG, and this gave me a chance to paint some really nice, bright, colourful models. Here is the Minstrel. You may have recognised him from the second edition. The artwork just almost really based on that. A lot of these models are based on on that, including the troll. Who is one of my favourites? Like that. Show the uh, assassin, who is on the model, largely just black and grey. I did spend a bit of time doing the edging and edge highlights and stuff on him. Largely just black and grey. Prophetess. Uh, face is a bit scowly really but she's unhappy about something on my model and that is Prophetess uh, the ghoul now, where is the ghoul model gone you know what? I can't find there he is <laughs> he has his gravestone of a skull and this weird shaped head. Fortunate shaped head. That is the ghoul. The monk. Very Friar Tuck inspired model. Oh. His bald head. Sandals. And some brickwork. Everybody's favourite elf. Everyone loves the elf in Talisman. Uh, can get his face right in this. So. Quite a bit of detail on the model on his shirt there. That is all those markings on his front there actually all detailed on the model. So surprisingly detailed. The dwarf uh, who is. Probably one of the bigger models in, in the Talisman game. I mean, look at him compared to the elf. He's quite a beefy, beefy old dwarf. And being that he is crouching as well, he looks, to be honest, from this angle, he does look like he's going to the toilet. But you imagine he's squatting down. So you compare him to the monk. So if he stood up, he would actually be a giant. So, but that's the dwarf. <laughs> Yeah, and that detail on his axe is all on the model, as is the ridges around his pauldrons and his mail, and even that is on the model. So, nice detailed models for a board game, but that is the door. We have the druid, who for some reason I've gone more white, but you don't really see it here, it's more of green, so I may revisit this and give that a green glaze or something, we watch green or something. There's a druid, looking typically druid, or nature based with a scythe, or whatever these things are called. Get what they're called. Sickle? Sickle. There we go. Yeah. Warrior. Who, I don't know, I'm not really into that pose for the warrior, but... <laughs> Was happy with the paintwork on him. Uh, yeah, warrior. Yeah, and finally, uh, we have these. These are the toad cards. So <clears throat> when you get turned into a toad, you know, whack this over the top, replacing your card. So it's the same. You know, it doesn't affect any of your fake tokens. And you get one of these models. And so there are three models. Uh, four models of Toad, and because they're all the same sculpt, they're on a different shape base, so you know if you're all turned into Toad for some reason, which Toad is yours. And these are some of the best models in the game, in the whole series, these Toads. I love these. They are brilliant. If you ever need a giant Toad model for D&D games or like, pick up Talisman just for these. 
Okay, let's have a look at the uh, cards in more detail. Okay, so let's have a look at the purchase deck. So that has just a talisman on the back. Uh, fancy, typical fancy flight games. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it has a slight pattern on the card. Hopefully you can see that if that comes out. And again, design work and artwork is typical of fancy flight games of well era, even now I'd say. So uh, it, it's good art. Don't get me wrong doesn't give me the warm fuzzies as the previous edition but it is very good still very serviceable artwork so sort of almost harking back to the second edition with its pastel looks rather than the very saturated third edition adventure deck kind of has this wheel on um that with these cards are the same magic stream princess who's a follower bob goblin so we've gone pretty much effectively back to second edition like a touched up modern version of the second edition you can see it is pretty cool artwork really nice and detailed which is cool not too sure that's an ogre though wild boar chanter so gold master of fate and drum magical vortex so again, you get a nice, even in the base game, uh, you are getting a nice lot of oh, fairy blade. You're getting a nice lot of adventure cards to go through. So hopefully, each of your games, you'll have different encounters. Talisman cards, spell deck. Feels. I love this art. My intention for this game is to get all the expansions in time. I have a few, not many, but I do want all the expansions for this game. And I think one of these, these are the alignment cards. Evil alignment, good alignment, and you don't have a card if you're neutral. At present there are four editions of the game, each having its own expansion. So pause this video, go make a cup of tea, come back, make yourself comfortable comfortable because this is going to be a long one. The first and second uh, are pretty much the same, with the second only having cosmetic changes, more colour on the cards and the like. Uh, the second edition was released in 1987. As such, the expansions release can uh, be used for either version. The Talisman expansion set was released in 1986 and it added 14 new characters, 6 new spells and 36 new adventure cards. Next, Talisman the Adventure was released and added 8 new characters, 9 new spells and a lot of new adventure cards. It also included 6 character sheets for keeping track of the attributes and possessions and 6 alternative ending cards. Should players want to play using a random ending instead of the basic crown of command. In 1987, Talisman Dungeon was released and was the first expansion to add another board section to the game, that of the titular dungeon. It also included in the box uh, 14 new adventures as well as adventure cards to be used whilst exploring the dungeon. There were also rules to use this expansion as a standalone game. Talisman Timescape was released in 1988 and added a sci-fi 40k set into the game, adding a new board that represented a series of linked dimensions. The next year, in 1989, Talisman City was released as the next expansion and included another board section to replace the city square on the main board. 1993 saw the final expansion released for this era of the game, with Talisman Dragons adding a dragon-themed cards and heroes. Games Workshop also sold metal miniatures for use in these editions of the game. During the spring of 1994, the third edition of the game was released and was given a completely artistic overhaul, making the aesthetics more in line with those of Warhammer at the time. The Borg was changed too, completely removing the inner section, instead using a card system to represent traversing through this area. 
whereas the first and second editions use card standees to represent the heroes. The third uh, edition in introduced plastic Citadel miniatures in the box. The character types also changed to be more in line with the Warhammer world, with players being able to play as minotaurs and goblin fanatics. This edition of the game saw three expansions released and the first uh, of which came in 1994. The City of Adventure added two new board sections, the City, which was based on the second edition, uh, edition expansion, and the Forest Realm. Dungeon of Doom was released next, also in 1994, and added another two board sections, the Dungeon itself and a Mountain Realm. These board sections fitted around the corners of the main board. The final expansion for this version, The Dragon's Tower, was released in 1995, and this featured a card tower which a dragon sat on top of. This Dragon's Tower replaced the normal end of the game. Also during this period, several new characters were released in White Dwarf. For 11 years the game languished out of print, until on the 7th of January 2007, Black Industries, which was a subsidiary of Games Workshop's publishing div uh, division, uh, announced a new version of Talisman, which was released on the 5th of October 2007. This edition was largely based on the second edition, but incorporating rules from the third, such as the experience system. The board size was increased to a six-piece board section, making it about 30 times larger than the second. This edition could have been short-lived, as with only a few months after its release on 28th of January 2008, Black Industries announced they would no longer be publishing board games. Then, on the 22nd of February, Fantasy Flight Games broke the news that they would be taking over the license of the game. Talisman Revised 4th Edition was released on the 17th of December 2008, as well as an upgrade pack that uh, updated the cards and plastic miniatures for people who had the Black Industries version. This edition has a lot of expansions, each adding new characters and cards that I shall outline here. The Reaper was released in December 2008. The Dungeon was released in May 2009 and was a big box that added a new corner board section. The Frost March was released in October 2009. The Highland was released in May 2010 and was another big box that added another new corner board section. The Sacred Pool was released in October 2010. The Dragon in September 2011 was another big box that added a new double sided inner board section. The Blood Moon in May 2012. The City was released in January 2013 and was another big box section that added a new corner board section. The Never Realm was released in January 2014 as a print on demand expansion. The Firelands was released in February 2014. The Woodland was released in September 2014 and was another big box that added a new corner board section. The Deep Realm was a print on demand released in January 2015 and required both the city and dungeon expansions to use. The Harbringer was released in June 2015 and signalled the beginning of the end and the Cataclysm came in 2016, which replaced the entire board with a new one. At this time, Fantasy Flight Games and Games Workshop had a bit of a falling out, and Games Workshop licenses were taken away from Fantasy Flight Games, including that of Talisman. For a short while during this period, Games Workshop released the game themselves and some of the expansions before Pegasus Spill took over the license and in 2019 released the revised 4th edition and its expansions. Pegasus Spill has also expanded the brand by releasing spin-off games including Talisman Legendary Tales, released in 2018, which is more aimed at a younger market, and Talisman Adventures, which is coming out soon and is a pen and paper RPG set in the Talisman world and in 2021 a competitive card game should be released. There have also been video games made based on Talisman, the first of which came out in 1985 for the ZX Spectrum. The 15th of November 2012 saw the release of Talisman Prologue, 
which was a single player video game version of the game, and then on the 12th of February 2014 came a Talisman Digital Edition, which was a multiple edition of the game, both of which were made by Norman Games. So that was a look at what was inside uh, the editions of the game, but let's have a discussion, quick discussion, about where you can get hold of the game. Pegasus Spill still published the revised 4th edition and its expansions, as well as the other games set in the Talisman universe. For all the other editions, you're going to need to turn to the second-hand market. And with that, so ends another retrospective video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, there was a lot to cover, and I only did it in brief with the 4th edition expansions. If you're interested in having more Talisman on the channel, let me know and I'll make some other videos, perhaps going into each of the expansions more, or at least the ones I have hold of. Um, if you haven't already, have a subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, leave a comment and all that good stuff. It really helps me out just doing that. And plus, just gives me the warm fuzzies each time someone gives me a thumbs up and a comment. Uh, until the next video, guys, please take care.